Hello there! Today is Sunday, 24th of March 2013, at about 4 o'clock in England, Ambury. My name is Stephen Hartley, if you like. I don't care. I'm not scared of the evil oppressors. Anyway, so this is the big one. This talk is going to be called something like um, What is God? So, the big subjects. And, um, yeah, firstly, I'd like to say um, I don't know if there's one or two or three, <laughs> maybe a few more who listen to these talks, who actually listen to all of it. Because um, I used to think that for a YouTube hit, they had to listen to all of it. But if you look at analytics, at my last one, I had 18 views, not very many for that one. But the um, number of minutes listened was about um, 120, and that 60 of them was me, because <laughs> so, it was an hour long. So one other person had listened to all of it, or perhaps, you know, a few people listened to five minutes. Now, I appreciate everyone's busy, um, but when you're listening to these talks on YouTube, you do tend to need to give them time, because when people are just reeling it off, you know, they don't always hit the markers from the, from the off. So someone's made a video they've usually got something to say or made some effort um, and I tend to find that when I watch them I often go to turn it off early on and think no you know give them a chance and then actually find out some really interesting stuff so sorry you have to do that sorry it takes time and obviously I'm just wasting time now waffling um, but you know I think that's why it's a good thing to sort of just listen and you can do something else play patience with cards or something uh, you know whatever chill out we need to take some more time in this world okay so I get on with it um, I'm actually going to include pictures in this talk and basically they are pictures of verses of the Bible that I took as I was reading the Bible. Now I didn't, I wasn't doing this all the way through reading the Bible. Uh, the Old Testament probably took me three, three maybe to four years, no yeah, probably three years to get through. Uh, I did have breaks of not reading stuff and cause some of it is incredibly oh, yeah, I'll say boring, <laughs> tedious, N numbers and Deuteronomy, those two, I think there's t that's two of them, actually I might, excuse me, I'm just going to get the title pages ready on this, I'd like to be correct, yes there's two, numbers and Deuteronomy, they are pretty boring, um, but within them are some real gems. Anyway, so three years reading the uh, Old Testament and the New Testament, that was probably less than six months. I mean, more than three quarters of the Bible is the Old Testament. And I'm reading um, a very nice copy edition that I got from a knockoff bookstore, sort of a cheap, you know, one of those cheap shops, everything's cheap. It's 20 quid. I don't know if it is real leather, probably isn't. Uh, but really nice Bible, nice big Bible. And it's the King James Version. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, obviously, that proves I have read the Bible. I've read the Quran. I mean, I read the New Testament of the Bible when, in my early 20s. Um, now 36 
and I read Revelations when I was 19. And obviously I've heard bits throughout my life being brought up as a Christian. Um, so, yes, and I read the Quran as well. And um, that's pretty good too. And that's that's kind of, you know, the first thing that struck me with the Quran is how similar to the Bible it is. Um, you know, it's got verses called Abraham. I think there's one called Mary. They've also got one called Cow. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's really interesting. Um, but also, you know, it's talking about the same people. It's not like on a different planet or anything. As my thoughts fed from the media on my thoughts of the Islamic community that's what I thought I thought it was going to be completely different um, right but this is um, I'm going to be focusing more on the Christian religion as that's what I've been brought up in and yeah that well anyway Right, now, yes, because what I really want to talk about here, first of all, is the Jesus thing. Now, obviously Jesus isn't mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible. And you probably are aware that Christians are well into Jesus. And we're always being talked to, to by Christians as sort of, you know, accept Jesus as your saviour. This is always the thing. It's kind of, you have to accept Jesus, 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 Jesus. You're not being really given the option <laughs> of just believing in God and praying to God. And, you know, they do say pray to God, but, you know, then there's always this Jesus aspect that has to come into it. Like the only way we can get to God is through Jesus. Well, you know, as a God-fearing person that I am, um, you know, I personally think that's that that sh shouldn't be true. I, you know, I almost feel scared saying it because it's so embedded into my head. There are things that I've been through in my life that I kind of partially connected to possibly Jesus and specifically then in that case Jesus not God that I'm a bit scared of saying it but I'm going to say it. I think it's a load of bollocks okay sorry Jesus if it is real and that's the case but why should it be and we'll go on there but no I'm going to use a rude word I think that is a load of bollocks and I think that so what I'm going to come on to is, in the sense that the New Testament um, kind of can't be fully trusted. Now I'll just get in here right now that um, I've read the, Bible, the New Testament a couple of times, and um, I couldn't. Everything Jesus says is good. In fact, it's fantastic you know what Jesus says really is fantastic and you could go through life just hearing the words that Jesus said funny enough that's a, in a Johnny Cash song he uses that phrase just for the words he said and not the other bits kind of added on you know you could really do well in life and I would you know I would stand by those his words Absolutely. But he never said we should worship him. He never said that. And um, I don't even think he ever said anything like him being the son of God. He called him father. But he wasn't sort of just saying it in the sense of he's only his father. But in the sense of it is everybody's father. Um, as can be proved 
in the Lord's Prayer. What does it start with? Our Father. So we can all pray to God. We don't have to have Jesus first. Get, get on with Jesus and then get on with God. That doesn't have to be the way it is. We can all have our own God. But there's only one God, so it's all the same God. Um, so I, I guess I've put that pretty succinctly I, I don't suppose there's any reason why I should try and widen that point now um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else to, uh, to put that one down yet I mean, I've I read a book um, by a guy called Maccabee, and he's a so-called Jewish, and he was kind of just um, writing a book on kind of what Jesus meant to the Jews, and you know he had to admit in his book a lot that there really is no recorded reference of Jesus from the Jewish side and but what he was focusing on in, in his book was how in the New Testament the Jews are really portrayed as the bad guys and um, funnily enough the Romans seem like <laughs> you know the okay guys and this this guy Maccabee in his book, I forget the name of it, sorry, but he um, he kind of talks about the sort of inconsistencies in 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 what what they're saying about the Romans and the Jews and the kind of things just don't add up. And his point of view was that basically that Jesus was um, a Pharisee, he was actually a Pharisee. Uh, what do they call him? Um, rabbi, a rabbi, and basically the definition of a rabbi is someone who has a normal day job. In the case of Jesus, he was a carpenter, but in the spare time, would do healing and um, teaching, and you know things like that and that seems to kind of sum up with with what we know of Jesus in his late stage and um, he also points out that there's only out of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John I think there's only one that starts with all the baby in a manger and all the rest of it and that that in a sense could quite possibly all be completely made up all that stuff with Herod and everything is just a kind of a fantasy story to build up this Jesus character but that G Jesus as a rabbi living in Israel thought not a lot of um, the Romans come in and occupying their land obviously um, so you know, w wouldn't have been too friendly to the Romans and actually sort of got together with a bunch of guys to, um, to you know, be a, like a guerrilla group, group against the Romans to, to defend, defend the country. Um, and they would have had nicknames. So they would have had their name and then they would have had their kind of group name. And and this guy who wrote this book kind of uses um, a couple of main things as proof points to prove that you know things have been doctored. And it come and that one of them is the um, the time when Pontius Pilate or whatever 
declares to the Jews that they can set one of the prisoners free, being that it's on a Passover. Now, first of all, apparently, being in a, a Passover, um, the Romans wouldn't have done anything special for the Jews. In fact, they would have probably just killed more Jews. I think they crucified 2,000 Jews when they invaded Israel. So, you know, <laughs> there's, you can see how they're playing this one. They're coming in hard and heavy and they want to, sh sh you know, shock and awe. Even back in those days, they had the tactics. So, yeah, this Passover story about them offering them to free Jesus and then they called, no, Barabbas, Barabbas. But apparently this guy's been able to look into it and um, you know, there is certain records of this and what it says in the Bible just doesn't tally up. And he actually says that, you know, in a sense, Barabbas was actually Jesus' nickname. So, you know, that's where they've got this name from. And they're making up this story about them freeing one person. They may be then keeping in some of the texts of the people shouting free Barabbas. As being, they, are, they were calling for Jesus to be free. And that was, his, that was his name that it was being used, if you like. Now, and also according to him, what Jesus um, did when he was going up against the Romans... But he was felt he was fulfilling a prophecy of Zechariah. And in this prophecy, apparently the um, the Roman army is defeated by God and something like a man with two swords. So so what Jesus in a sense was thinking was that he was going to take on the entire Roman army, himself and his band, charge at them with two swords, and that God was going to send, you know, a lightning bolt or a big explosion and defeat the Roman army. Now, maybe that's what Jesus thought, maybe it's not, I don't know. But apparently, this is what he did. He then went and attacked the Romans, and that's why they imprisoned him so so it didn't work you know it didn't God didn't fire down balls from the sky maybe Jesus didn't think that I don't know but maybe that's why then Jesus on the cross was did shout father why have you forsaken me um, and then died um, and then well hang on before I go on to that so if Jesus then thought, you know, that's what God was supposed to do, but in a sense, Jesus did change the world. He did, if you like, maybe defeat the Roman army because of what happened after he died. Christianity just took over, went wild. Now, so then get on to this, Jesus <coughs> didn't rise again from the dead. So now now what I'm saying would be considered blasphemy in the eyes of the Christian and Catholic Church. And it says so in the Bible, in the in, in the New Testament, you know, if you don't accept that, that's what it's saying, then you don't accept God or whatever. That's what it's trying to tell me, you, everyone. So, but I'm saying that I don't believe Jesus did rise from the dead. I think that was an added on story. Just like the walking on water, turning the water into wine. All of those things, just this build up of this um, one person that could get you into heaven. In eternal life. Right? Which we've already got. Okay. Sorry. Um... <clears throat> Sorry, almost lost my point. I'm losing it. <laughs> so, 
So yes, Jesus didn't rise again from the dead. Now, Jesus had a brother called James. And actually that is one thing you should read in the Bible. Is the chapter of James. It's only four pages long, or in this big book anyway. But it is amazing. Um, I think, yeah, I got chills reading that. It really reads different than a lot of what you read, and it's really fantastic. Now, Jesus and the disciples, including his brother James, were waiting for Jesus to come back alive. And they're the ones that they were originally called, is it the Nazarenes? Yeah, because the Jesuits is something different that I think. The Nazarenes, and they, if you like, are the proper birth of the Christian Christian religion. That is the, the, if you like, the unadulterated version. Um, and obviously Peter would have been in there too. So the Nazarenes were expecting Jesus to come back. And apparently they waited something like three or four hundred years for the Jesus to come back. So obviously it wasn't the same people, but they must have passed on the message, you know, wait wait for his return when he comes back. Um, and obviously while that was going on, and then about 300 years later is when the Catholic Church was well, that's when the New Testament was written in Greek. Now, remember the Greeks and the Romans at the time had many gods. Um, and it was because of this power of Christianity, they kind of needed to get along board with this new one God system. So, you know, it seemed like the plan was to write the New Testament this adapt scriptures from the time to kind of give them um, the power if you like over who can get into heaven and hell so giving them all the power over the religion that was taking everyone by storm because everyone believed and we do because even you know as a young child or baby we know there's something I mean probably as a baby you're still in contact with your subconscious I mean you see the contentness of a baby is, is amazing I mean, not when they're crying when they're hungry or cold or whatever but when they're you know you see how I don't know Bob Marley says it in the song. The strongest man I ever did see was Wesley when he was a baby in his life. So, yeah, those babies, they're still in con their contact with their subconscious. The children, they, they, they know as well. And we all know. It's just, you can't put it to words. You can't even describe it. It's, it's too difficult to describe so I won't even try but we know and it, you know and when and when we know and believe that's when it becomes powerful because you know it's there in your in your forethoughts so you know I keep saying keep in mind you I'm a believer in God this New Testament has been adapted to give the Romans their grip on the, on the people to to enslave us. 
because they need workers. And the Roman's power <coughs> I think the Romans power passed on to Germany. And you got you got this hail Caesar arm up in the air. It was just like hail Hitler, isn't it? Arm up into the air. So this power hasn't gone away but they've moved it, they've disguised it. And obviously the Italians are still on the side of the Germans in the war. And I, did, I guess the Greeks have been alright. <laughs> I mean, pe people are good. So, you know, don't, you can't knock people for believing something because they know in the back of their mind there is something to believe. There is something that's there is a God, and when you dress this up and you go to school and they teach you this is the God and this is the book, and they only read you the New Testament. So uh, one thing I'd like to point out as well in the New Testament, I've said about James, the James chapter being fantastic. Um, one I've had a problem with mainly is Paul. The whole Paul story is confusing and I mean I'm, I'm assuming he was once a Roman otherwise you know there wouldn't have been the whole thing of his turn you know, a Roman officer. Then he somehow seems to have been claimed to have been born in Jerusalem or something which I don't, doesn't make sense does it? Um, <clears throat> or maybe born in Jerusalem to Roman parents, possibly. Yeah? That's a possibility of yeah? how long they were there. Anyway, it just it all seems a bit wrong. I mean, there are a lot of things that Paul says which really make sense and that they're good, they're good things, but mixed in with some not good things. I'm not sure if I took any pictures of that because I didn't particularly like it. But I tell you what, he uses the word Amen a lot. Now, Amen is not used once in the Old Testament. Okay? Now bear in mind that is, like I say, more than three quarters of the Bible. That word isn't used. So, according to my theory, the New Testament being adapted, in comes this new word, Amen supposedly means so be it but in that case why not just say so be it I mean it's not particularly long is it so be it it's one syllable longer but at least it'd be clear so and there is there is apparently some sort of link between our men and some sort of Egyptian god <laughs> excuse me it's not nice to hear sniffs but a sniff. Don't like blow my nose. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, yeah, so the word Amen. Now, if it is some Egyptian god, every time someone says a prayer, they sign it off mentioning some Egyptian god. <laughs> now, to me, I don't think. God would like that and I'm sure he won't be angry anyway because especially when people are saying it without knowledge um, but you know probably gives the people who put it in there and for whatever reason gives them some kicks may even give them some power sort of to keep that God alive so it's quite quite interesting that um, where you see the word Amen in the New Testament, you can probably safely assume that it's been doctored and maybe that whole verse that you've just read has been invented, if you like, added in. And the Lord's Prayer, as Jesus tells his disciples what to say when they're praying to the Father, he doesn't say Amen at the end. 
and this is the King James, and it's so there's no Amen there. So obviously these people doctoring things. Um, you got to imagine there was quite a lot of reluctance to do it. I mean, they had to rely on scribes. And I wonder if sometimes, you know, the, the reason James seems so specific in there, it's definitely worth reading. I mean, you know, could have slightly been put in and got past the, uh, the Roman, whoever was checking the work. Um, and also the Lord's Prayer, the word Amen, does not come after that. So where did it come from? And that should be something worth finding out for any historian. It'd be very interesting to know the truth. And don't tell me it's just so be it. It's come from something. It wasn't in the Old Testament. It's come in since. Right. So, what about the Old Testament? Well, Genesis, the first part, good uh, 46 pages in this big book. Well, I mean, that really is a a collection of old stories, probably have been passed on verbally and recorded in this book. I mean, that's what it comes across to me as. Or, you know, they often say God speaks in parables and things. They're, they're parables. They're kind of, you know, perhaps can be read into on different levels. And then, then we get to Exodus. Now, and that's really the beginning of the Israelites' story. There was a, a tribe of slaves in Egypt that God kind of felt sorry for. Now, as I'm saying the word God here, when I was reading it, it, um, it really seemed more like some sort of higher level being, perhaps alien, more than the God that I know and believe in. And just say briefly, the God I know and believe in is is a God that made the universe, um, is the God that has kind of designed everything and pretty much knows what's going to happen, and the God that guides me in my life and can make anything happen to give me a sign or a warning or a telling off. You know, that's the God I know. And the God in Exodus <laughs> does not seem <laughs> like that. Now, when that develops and Moses leaves Egypt and everything and they're still in contact with God and see him walking around and speak to him or then he starts speaking through a cloud of smoke. Um, you know, this this is a more practical sort of thing. is sort of helping them out. Now, I do believe that the guidance they were given and the Ten Commandments and everything else is in a sense through this it's alien beings or but in a sense their best interpretation of God for them as well because you know anyone who says oh yeah we were made by aliens we were created by aliens da 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 well still there would have been some entity that had created them so you know they'd still pose this face the same questions that we face who made who made us? Oh, you made us. Well, who made you? Right? So, I still I kind of believe that their intentions were, was, were good and everything else. But it doesn't seem like a God 
an all-powerful universe creating God except perhaps when it gets to and obviously you know this this stuff's been recorded so maybe it's yeah you know, I could quite be wrong about that and there might not have been any aliens involved I'm going, to, I'm going to bring in this point as well about um, the true Israelites were in fact Negroes and not the white Jews that we see today who are mainly from Uzbekistan and, and so mingled now with Americans I mean they, they seem almost Americans don't they so which makes sense because here's a slave race in Egypt well come on that's in Africa they're probably Negroes aren't they and you, you see some a lot of pictures there's a lot of evidence for this um, so I'm not going to go into it I don't know it all when I heard it it seemed very very peculiar to me and I was thinking well where did those white Jews come from then where did they come from and um, well, like I mentioned Uzbekistan and they didn't actually lay any claim to the land of Israel until the 1100s probably when they realized no one else was laying claim to it the um, the true Israelites had been scattered M mainly as it seems over to America and the Caribbean so as, as slaves so so right in the beginning there's this slave race that um, let's just say an alien being well, let's just say God let's just say it is God for now God takes a liking to them feels sorry for them wants to raise them up he likes them there's something about that that um, specific gene pool that he likes but blimey are they <laughs> they're difficult to deal with I forgot the, um, you know they come out into the wilderness and then they're wishing they were back back in Egypt but fair enough you know they didn't know God gives them bread from heaven yes it probably is God uh, and um, in the form of mushrooms probably and leads them to the land of Israel. Now, as you go through the, they then, then in um, Numbers and Deuteronomy, can't remember what's in Leviticus too much. <laughs> but basically, everything is explained how how you should live. Maybe that's Leviticus. How you should live and everything. Um, how many people per acre of land and stuff like that. You know what you should do if you get certain type of sicknesses. You know, it's like oh, you have a big black spot. Well, then do this. A big white spot. Oh, you do this. Um, includes sort of burning your house. <laughs> you know, it, it's a guidance of how to live well, and so it is quite interesting, but very mundane. And you also hear about all the generations. Anyway, so. So they go, and then it goes into Joshua. No, I think Joshua is the first king, and the people demanded a king. God told them through his prophets, "Look, you don't want a king. Do not have a king. You don't need one, because he said, if you have a king, then the whole population will be judged by the doings of the king." And then as you see what happens is you get a good king and everything's fine you, you have a bad king and everything's awful so even though the prophets warned the people that you don't want a king they insisted so they got their king and through the good or bad works of their king they were either um, punished or rewarded so and this goes back and forth and <coughs> eventually God so angry with them Maybe, well it's not just based on the king but you know when they had a bad king it did seem that people kind of 
got into bad acts and everything. So they annoyed with them, um, cast them out of uh, their lands uh, into neighbouring lands as slaves, um, and eventually further on all over the world. So he still fulfilled his promise to Abraham that um, his sea shall number the sands in the sea, <laughs> something like that. Um, but the Old Testament is is amazing. I mean, you know, it's hard to read. It's long, but there are some real gems in there. Hopefully, some of these I've did take a photo of, and you you'll have read. Um, and um, and it's and it's honest as well. You see, it's um, you know, it, it doesn't feel like it's trying to put a shade of light here or there. It, it's just straight and honest and obviously we're, I'm reading it in an English translation from Hebrew so probably not picking up all the meanings of certain things but you know well I, I got through it anyway it was a good read I probably won't read it again just yet <laughs> um, but yeah it seems true it you know if, if just as a record and yeah there's some miracles in there Daniel was cast into a pit of fire and through his faith survived. God God saved him. And you know, and there and there's some bits in Ezekiel as well, sort of can only be described as alien space craft coming being visible and everything affecting things. Um but so yeah, it's really quite an amazing read, but I think what it serves best as really would be a would be an instruction for how to how to have a, a working society, and you'd have to go right back before there was a king of Israel, and you don't have a king. That's the way it works. Everyone believes in God. Everyone believes in the commandments, um, and and you've got the structure there of you know how much land is needed. Um, you know, and make and and have a temple. Why not? If you know, if if you want, the instructions are there on exactly how to build the covenant. Not saying we should all go around building covenants, but um, yeah, you know, there's the Bible. Um, so read the New Testament, but beware for the. Uh, added on bits which is quite difficult but as I've sort of made a mention to you before you know aside from this book I read this book as you know as words but you know the oldest book kind of you can read so you can you can be reading these the bits in the Old Testament really trying to get your brain into what it been, would have been like 3,000 years ago, however long ago. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fascinating. But as to the real God, we don't, you don't need to read the Bible, I think, to know God at all. We all have this innate ability when we're born. It's just that we let go of it and then it becomes weaker. A link with your subconscious. If you if you had a stronger link with your subconscious during the day, you would you would just know things and you would just learn to to read that. And um, you know, at night we are in our subconscious. You know, that's kind of my belief. Or it's another dimension, but it's it's kind of closer to your subconscious. You sort of you're not really you are sort of in control in your dreams, you are enacting your own way, but what happens is not kind of controlled by you, that's, that's almost the same in life as well, although we have a bit more control. So you, there is a link to God, you know, everyone knows inside them what's wrong and what's right, and 
you know, you know if you're doing harm to yourself, you know that's not right, but you know that's not as bad as doing harm to somebody else, I, I would say. So, you know, none of us are perfect. Well, maybe some people are perfect. I'm not perfect. I know I have this thing with smoking. Um, that's, that's my biggest hinge, you know. So I'm not perfect. Says I shouldn't be perfect, but yeah, I could be better. It's difficult, but it, it's still maybe the striving to be better is a good thing because you know I've been worse in the past. I've had more bad things that I did, and yeah, maybe I'll never be completely free of them. Um. Right, um, I'm about to now go on to the final point here in my talk, um, and that is um, prophecies, the end times, say the times we're approaching now, um, and we get this thing in the Bible called the Revelations. Now, the Revelations was the first thing I read when I sort of sat down and read the Bible and I thought it was really cool and I wondered why um, you know I'd never heard of it before because I've been to a Christian school and I'd never heard of this revelation so it sounded pretty cool you know a lot of things happening um, but now when I read it you know feeling what I do. Now, it's called the Revelation to John. The Revelation of Jesus Christ which God <laughs> unto his servant John. Who who is this John? Because it's not John the Baptist, is it? Because John the Baptist was killed before Jesus. So uh, John but, you know, there's no mention of who he is. But I think it's, it's made to sound like it's supposed to be John the Baptist. But can't be. But so then isn't stated as that. It's just... Oh, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, I'm sorry. Actually, that's right. I think it's one of Paul's sons. Uh, I think Paul had son... Timothy and maybe John was the other one but John John then has there's three letters at the end and then there's Jude and then there's Revelation um, so I think John was appointed somehow by Paul and as I've already discussed Paul <laughs> I don't I don't really sit on him oh no maybe he was one of the disciples you got two letters from Peter anyway aside from the point the revelation sounds to me made up. Now a lot of a lot of what's in the revelations is a duplicate of what you hear in Ezekiel uh, when he's describing these sort of spaceships and things, and and that is the 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 stuff to do with um, when they talk about having uh, a face of a lion and body of a bear and things like that you know and yeah it just seems made up when you read it I mean you just if you read it front to back you just makes you feel sick because it's just all just ugh it's just oh, it's things that are happening now but there's also you know you could read that into things that have happened in the past so in a sense there's a there's a truth of the revelation in the sense of it being you know, when ca catastrophic things have happened in the past, like the plague. You know, when the plague was going on, they must have thought that was the revelations, really. And, yeah, I mean, I don't think you can really get much from the revelations. I think it's just all... It's just thinking of every nasty thing that could happen. Mind you, we are seeing a lot of what it said. You know, you can read into it, though, you know 
third of the waters will be poisoned. Well, we've probably had two thirds of the waters poisoned now. A third of the light from the stars and the sun duck gone. Well, with pollution, you could say we've had that. So, you know, a lot of these things are happening, but I just think the revelations is a made up thing. It's just designed to put fear into people and then, you know, to cap it off with you. Know, the only way you can get through is to believe in Jesus the Savior and believe that he was resurrected. Is forcing you to believe. And you see a lot of people like that in the Christian church. You can see that they're forcing themselves to believe. So it gets to the point of, it gets to the point of, you know, what's that when you have to slap someone? They get hysterics. You know, you see when they, I've seen a few clips of people going, you know, and they and they think that's them speaking in tongues. <laughs> it's just pathetic. Um. But they're only probably doing it because of their true desire to to be accepted by God. So the, you know, it just shows that they that it's important to them, I suppose. But or maybe they do. Some people do it because they know they are really bad in other ways. See, I say I have my sins. It's smoking, but you know, you know, I tend to be nice to people. I'm a nice guy, and I think, you know, I I, I hate that you see someone in pain or in anguish and if that was to be caused by yourself you know that's yeah I think that's evil in a way that's nasty and some people do it and some people do it for revenge because it was done to them and you know it's no good <clears throat> right like I said end times I do believe we are facing end times I think we're we're gonna you know we are just logic says we're gonna see a sort of catastrophe for the human race because we're just growing and growing and growing. We're using up all the resources. We're ruining the state of the land to be able to grow food, and climate change, man-made or not, is making it doubly difficult and you know until the, the real issues are looked at which they're not because the world's driven by the economy it wants 2% growth well if you want 2% growth every year you know then this world isn't going to last long humans are raping the world the world is fighting back and this, I believe, is the prophecy that we all know. Prophecy, I believe, in future viewing. Maybe, you know, I believe that Nostradamus could have seen the future. I believe it's possible. and uh, Or at least he saw possible futures. Or he saw very likely futures. You know, and I think we all know in our subconscious, if there's a big thing that's going to happen, we all know in the back of our minds that it's coming and if it's going to affect us all and I think it is I don't know when but I think it is so I'd say to wrap up this conclusion I would say the answer is to know your God to know your God is my God and everybody else is God and um, to be his servant and nobody else is servant okay thank you bye